morning. Hi, I'm Reva with Quality Sewing in Vacuum, and I am so excited that you're here. So welcome. Um, I want to give you a little bit of information as we're starting. We will be um, posting this on two different places. So we have Facebook Live going. So welcome. Thank you for coming. And we also have folks on Instagram. So we're glad that you're here as well. Um, so now Instagram and Facebook are a little bit different. Instagram has an hour limit. Now, depending on your questions and things like that, uh, I don't know how long this will go. We might be five minutes and be out of here, or it might take longer. But when we get to that hour mark, Instagram, we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Um, but we're gonna to try to answer everybody's questions and get that all done. And if we happen to go past the hour mark, those of you who are on Instagram, feel free to fl uh, flip over to um, Facebook at some point in time and catch the recording of the last part. So we'll be happy to see you all on there. So again, good morning. I, I'm hoping that you're all well this morning and um, I'm really excited to have you join us from our local area and those of you who are out of state. So. Um, just hello. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about upping your game with embroidery and how to make your embroidery more efficient and faster. And also, maybe you're looking for a side hustle, you wanna have some sort of embroidery business. And the tool that works really well for that is the multi-needle machine. And this machine is so much fun and it's incredibly easy to use. So now if you look at the PR1055X here, you're gonna notice it has 10 threads. Isn't that scary? I know a lot of people think that this must be a very difficult machine to use because it has the 10 threads. And actually, it's not. It's probably one of the most simple machines to use. It's a dedicated embroidery machine and it stitches extremely fast and you get to pre-thread your machine. So the machine is numbered from one to 10 and you simply put your threads in order that you want them or in, in just in one to 10 order. And I was gonna say in the order you want them to sew, but that's that can be the case in some places, but you might wanna go get red at a random time, you can do that as well. But the nice thing is that you're gonna pre-thread your machine, so you don't have to stop and wait for your machine to change the end of thread color, and then be able to switch over to a different color and re-thread your machine. You know how on your tabletop machines, you do that and you, you end up babysitting your machine. So you're sitting there all day long doing one design because it finishes with pink and then it's time for yellow so it stops. You gotta re-thread the machine and then you can push the go button again. This machine, you push the go button and it will go and switch the threads automatically for you. So it, it's really pretty easy and don't be intimidated. It's nothing like a serger and sergers are actually easier now too, so okay. So let's talk about re-threading. Threading can be really daunting uh, for people to think that they're gonna have to re-thread the machine. And I wanted to re-thread this one. You notice this one's getting low, so it's time to, that that thread should go. So I'm going to give myself a nice little tail here and cut that thread. So I have a really long tail and I'm gonna remove that spool and I have another spool of the same color because I want to keep the color. Now, if you want to change your thread color, you can do that as well. But if you want to keep it, that's fine too. So I'm just going to pop this right on to the machine and I'm going to put my two tails together and I'm going to do, I call it a balloon knot. You know that knot that you do? I dropped it. It's not going to make a knot if I don't have them both together. Um, but I, I call this a balloon knot because it's the kind of thing that I do when I'm doing a balloon, right? So you just, it's an, is that called an overhand? I don't know, there's a name for it. I don't know what it's called. So now they're linked together here and I'm gonna ask Carrie to take a look down here. Now this one, I know you can't see from where you are, but this one is numbered number two. So I'm gonna go down here where it says number two and here's the tail of that thread. Okay, and I'm gonna just pull that until I see the knot. So now I've pulled through. And if you were doing two different colors, then you would see the color change at this point. Now over on the machine, so come with me, Carrie, there's a little button right here. And that is my, re uh, my needle threader button. So I'm not gonna push it yet. I'm gonna let you go back now. So poor Carrie's gonna get a workout. 
Um, it's, this is called camera calisthenics. Um, so I'm going to push that button and then a little needle threader comes through, but I did make a mistake because it's on, it's on needle thread number one. I need to go to color number two. There we go. Now I have my uh, needle threader is there and I put that through the needle threader and then there's a little thread cutter right up here to cut the thread push the button again, and then the little needle threader pulls the thread back through the eye of the needle and the threading is complete. So that's really, really easy. Now, not only is the machine efficient to use because it will change the thread for you, and I'll show you that in a minute, but also it has what's called a free arm. So if you know, like on your sewing machine, if you want to do a cuff or a collar or a pant leg, how you take your accessory tray off and expose a free arm, um, most machines have that. This is a similar thing. So we can put on items that are difficult to get in a hoop, uh, tote bags, t-shirts. You don't have to unsew anything anymore. It can just go right on over here. It also stitches very, very quickly. It stitches at up to a thousand stitches a minute, but you can regulate that and tell it what speed you want it to stitch at. So you have full control. Okay, so let's look a little bit about the threading real quick. You're going to notice that it has all these dials, and this is an industrial style a tension system for the machine and what that means is that the dials are going to let the thread move smoothly even at a high rate of speed even if you're using metallic threads so instead of a tension disc like on our sit down sewing machines that you put it through the tension area and then when you put the foot down it pinches on the thread and it kind of um, it keeps the thread from going too fast based on how tight it's pinching which can be, you know, you've used done uh, metallic threads and how, how um, they can shred and stuff like that when it's being pinched and, and um, abused that way. But on this one, the, this is just like a set of dials. And so the thread goes around that and it smoothly turns and it will flow through around the dial. So it's not being uh, damaged or, or in, impeded in any way. So, and then make sure if you're watching that if you have any questions, you type those in and we'll answer your questions and be sure to give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you are having a good time. And if you want to pass on the, uh, the information to a friend, then just share it and that would be great too. Okay, so that's what makes this uh, tension system different than your tabletop machine. And it also, when I mentioned like this was number two, it's like dot to dot. It's numbered the whole way down. So you really don't even have to get out your threading uh, manual because it's all right on the face of the machine. So it's pretty easy there. So now let's go and take a look at creating or bringing in a design. I want to bring in one real quick, just something really easy because I want to show you how it changes thread colors. So let's go in here. There's a ton. Well, I, let me go back. You've got lots of built-in items here. You have uh, different categories of embroidery designs. We have uh, shapes so you can make frames or quilt labels. You have decorative elements for decorating buttonholes and a whole series of buttonholes. So if you want perfect buttonholes on that decorator pillow or on um, a top that you're making, you've got it. Then you also have monogramming and in a smaller size, you have the big monograms in all these different styles. And then you also have just regular fonts in um, several different styles there. So I'm just going to go back up here and grab this one and I'll bring in our Fariva. That's great. And set means it can go to the machine. But you know what? I think I want to add my last name in there too. So I'm going to go and get an F and say set. And you notice it put it right on top of it. So I can just use the directional arrows and put it over to where I want it to go. Say edit end. And now it's ready to sew. But it's not quite in the middle. So I'm just going to touch that center button and it centers it for me. So it's really easy to do onboard designing. I am going to go back to edit though because I do want to change the colors. So um, let's see. I'm, in, I'm on F right now. I think I'm going to make that green. And then I'm going to go up to my R and I'm going to make that orange. And then say OK and edit end. Now it's ready to go. So I have some fabric. 
um, hooped up. The hoops that it comes with, it comes with a four by four, it comes with a five by seven, and then it comes with an eight by 14 inch hoop. And then this little one that I never remember the size. Oh, two and a half by one and a 1.6 inches. So this is a nice little one if you're doing uh, little bags or cuffs and collars and things like that. So this, this will just fit on the machine and the arm that holds this in place actually is adjustable. So I'm gonna loosen the screws there and pull that in until it matches up the size of my hoop. And I'm gonna click that into place. Make sure that's in the right spot. And then I'm gonna tighten those screws again. You really don't have to take the screws out. You just loosen them a little bit and then it can slide. So you don't have to get any special tools out or uh, screwdrivers or hex screws or anything like that to adjust it for a different hoop. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we can start sewing. So I'm gonna to touch embroidery. And then it does have a safety feature. It won't go unless you unlock it. So it doesn't want your fingers underneath it. So it's gonna stitch out our little, our little uh, letters here. And I don't know if you can see there. So it's gonna sew, but the neat thing about this is one, those letters are built into the machine. And I have it threaded wrong somewhere. Let's take a look. So while I, since it did that, take a look. Oh, I know what happened, but look at the right, right here. I guess this is my blinking light. It's telling me that something went awry. And what I notice is on the machine, I don't know if you can get in there, but the bobbin thread is pulling up. And that's because, and I'm going to step over Carrie here. The reason why is because the thread got caught under the spool. I didn't check that before. You should check that before. Okay, so now, and it even tells me right here on the screen that it was thread number nine. Now where this comes to be a very valuable thing is if you're doing a big tile scene or something like that and you're not in the room with your machine and it's okay to leave the room with, with, of your, with, where your machine's running. But if you're not in the same room and a thread breaks or something like this happens, the machine stops and then you're able to, um, you can see it from down the hallway that it's, that it's blinking at you. And then you know which exactly which thread it's on. Okay, so I'm gonna say cancel to that. Now, when you have a challenge like this, if the thread breaks or something like that, the machine typically goes 15 stitches before it will stop. That's very responsive and it's extremely predictable. In all the years I've been doing embroidery, it has been it's been that way on my multi needles. In fact, I should tell you, I got my first multi needle, I think. 18 years ago and I had um, and I've been ran a home-based embroidery business with those machines I ended up having three machines in my home to do um, embroidery I didn't like staying up late so I wanted to get it all done faster so I had three machines that were running and it really is so much fun to do so I'm gonna go back those 15 stitches 10 20 okay so there's no five on here I could touch that five times but I don't want to so I'm gonna go lock Oops, I gotta say okay to get out of that. Okay, and then I'll go and say go. And now it should cover up that little oopsie area, okay? So as this is going, um, you can notice it's not going terribly fast right now, and I'm gonna keep it kind of at that slower speed because it, it does have sound and I want you to be able to, to hear everything that's going on. But you can adjust that speed. Right now it's at 500 stitches a minute but you can go up to um, a thousand stitches per minute. So that's really pretty, pretty cool. So right now it's stitching out the one letter. And what I was saying before the bobbin stop was that the thing to, that's really cool about the lettering is that there's lettering built into the machine. So if you're doing any type of personalizing, whether for yourself or for a business, like I did a lot of names on shirts and we'll talk about that in a little bit too on how to do that now you notice oh you know what that was aha uh -huh, i know what that was okay so it changed did you see it cut the thread and change the thread isn't that wonderful now what happened is that the um the needle is bent so i guess i didn't do my due diligence to make sure that none of the needles had been bent before i got out here yeah i was the last person to use it so 
let's go back here and I'm going to go back to this color and I'm just going to choose a different color and I'm going to do that with my magic wand. I'm going to go grab purple and we'll just use purple instead. All right. And that one's not threaded. So you know what I'm going to do? We're going to just stop because <laughs> apparently I'm batting a thousand today with this particular design. So anyhow, let me take this off and you can see that the R stitched out really nice and then we tried to do a different color and then life went sideways okay so all right so maybe we should call we're, we're trying to figure out what to call these series and maybe it should be stump reva or what could go wrong today you know you know that life happens right okay all right so let's go look a little bit at the machine too i want to before i do i want to point out a couple of little things so I had mentioned before about the fact that you don't have to take your garments apart you don't have to do wacky things you know roll them up and tape them or anything like that and what I mean by that if you've ever done a onesie or something on a flatbed machine you know how you have to turn it inside out you gotta roll it so it can stay in one spot then you gotta tape it so it doesn't come unfluffed and get underneath the needle right that's a pain so if you have a little t-shirt that you want to do, you can just hoop it up just like this. Now, we don't have to worry about anything except for one thing. I did have the smaller hoop on, so I do need to adjust my arm so it will fit. So I'm going to just loosen those two screws. So Reva, after you're done with what you're showing, um, Carolyn has asked if you can show how to do a cuff. Why, Carolyn? Isn't that nice? You know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay, you may have to come and bring me your cuff. I have a little cuff. I'll, sh I'll try to show you that. So, but yes. Okay, so here is my t-shirt. So what I like to do here is put my arm inside and come out the neck. And the reason I do that is because then I make sure that I don't put this up to the machine and stitch that in. Can you see how that could happen if I put it in like this? It's going to all sew as one unit. So I do this just to make sure that it's all free. When I first started doing embroidery for a business, um, I would I would go and get, I had like the polo shirts or maybe it was a button-down shirt. And I would take that button-down shirt and unbutton the whole thing. If it was a polo, I'd unbutton the polo. You don't need to do that. You just put the hoop in and then put your hand through the arm, I mean, not through the arm, through the neck, and then you can put it on. You don't have to unbutton anything. So now we've got that on there and it fits beautifully, right? We've got the shirt hanging free. Nothing's gonna impede that. You could do the same thing with a baby onesie, okay? What, maybe you wanna do tote bags. So if you wanna do tote bags, those are fun and they're great money makers. Who doesn't want a tote bag with the uh, team name on it or the group, a book bag, whatever it may be. Same thing, open it up so you know that you're not gonna be stitching your, your bag shut. Make sure it's open and then simply slip this on and you can hear it click. Did you hear that? I'm gonna do it again. You wanna hear this. If you don't hear that when you put it on and you've been sewing and then you hear that, oh, yeah, you're not as happy, okay? But then you can you can um, definitely just let that bag hang. It's going to do beautiful embroidery and you're set to go, okay? Let's talk about that cuff. I don't want to get too far from the cuff question, so let's look at that really quick. So if I'm doing a cuff... I'm going to take the little, the little guy here and uh, let me get my shirt. Now this is just a little shirt. So the cuff is really small. So, um, you know, take that with what, what you will. Right. So what I would do is on a cuff, usually it's the, the, um, the placement for the monogram, I believe if you're, cause I would assume you're doing a monogram on the cuff. I believe it's near the buttonhole, but if I had a customer who wanted to do that, I would go online and look at the etiquette for um, monogram placement on, or go to like um, um, fine men's dress shirt maker 
and a look at the service for getting the monogram and where they place it. Maybe Nordstrom's would have that on their website. So take a look at that. And then you always, of course you wanna use stabilizer and I don't have any stabilizer here, so just pretend I have stabilizer. Now, the last thing I did on here was a layer stabilizer and a piece of fabric. This is a couple of pieces of fabric and there's a seam. So I am gonna loosen my hoop because I know that I'm gonna need extra space. In fact, now yeah, that's too small. I was gonna use that, the rest of that. Okay, so I would put this in, take the outer, the outer ring and place it in inside the sleeve. See, it's inside the sleeve. So I need that to sit flat. And I would have my stabilizer in there too. And then come in with your outer hoop and just push it in there. And then it's met, it's level with the table. So now I'm gonna countersink it a little bit. And that's good to do on a hoop like this. On a tabletop machine, you can't countersink as much as I have here. Okay, but on a multi-needle, you're able to do that. So I would have stabilizer the whole way, and then we'd be able to, um, to put our monogram on, okay? And since we have that, let's talk about that monogram real quick. I'm gonna shrink the, um, the arm back down so I can get this guy on there, and I don't know if I went far enough, so we're gonna give it a try. Nope. Okay, all right, so now it's on, so let me tighten those screws back up. Very easy to go from one project to a next on there. Okay, so now let's say I have a monogram I wanna put on there, and we'll just pretend that it's that RF again. Now this is this font, this is the largest size that that one makes. And I know I want this to be small, so I'm gonna go to medium and small size. Then I can add my second letter, and they're both small. So if I come in here so you can see, can you see the, let's zoom in. So there's my design, there it is in my little hoop. So I'm gonna close that, it's good. So now I'm going to set, and I, let me use my stylus so my fingers aren't in the way. All right, so I have my little RF, and I know, Carrie, can you see the little ring right there, does that show? That shows me the outline of the hoop that I have on, because the machine knows what hoop you have on the machine. And now what I'm going to do is go to edit end and I'm gonna turn on this camera right here. So the machine does have a built-in camera, which is really cool. So now it's showing me exactly what's in the hoop. And I, I'm hoping you can see the seam line right there. And you can see that dark space, that's the end of my cuff right there. And I can even see the stitching line. Okay, so now I know that I want to rotate that, and you can rotate 90 degrees, 10, 1, or even 1 tenth of a degree. I'm going to go 90, and then maybe a little bit more, and then maybe I want this to come over there so it's closer to the end, and maybe I want it up there. So you can visually place your embroidery right where you want it to go, and actually I think I need to go a little bit more and then I don't know if you notice that line that's in line with my design is actually moving can you see it move along with the design so then I'm eyeballing that along with my line of the edge of the cuff there so then you can get it placed just how you want it and feel free to use um, a uh, fabric marking pen to show the exact location of where you want that to go and the reason I rotated it is because this is the end this is where the little hand is going to stick out Okay, so really easy to do custom monogramming and names and things like that. This is a perfect tool to use if you're putting names on a shirt and you need to make sure they're in line with that pocket. Have you ever, you've seen, um, you know how men's dress shirts a lot of times have the, that pocket there and you want to make sure that your name is the same, uh, is straight with that pocket because if it's like that it's going to just look weird right even if it's a little bit off so you can get it placed exactly right on where you need it to go so that's pretty cool and when you're done with that we'll just turn off our camera say okay and then we're ready to start sewing and it'll be done okay did that answer your cuff question let us know if not because i'm happy to to um 
to go back there. Um, one other thing I want to show you that helped me a lot when I have for doing business is I had two sets of hoop hoops for my machine. So I had two four by fours, two five by five, five by um, sevens, two of the little ones. And so while it was stitching one, I would hoop the other one and have that ready to go. And then to get the hoops off, all you need to do is lift up on the hoop and put your thumbs on the um, guide there and slide it out. So what I really ended up doing, especially on a little one like this, is just grabbing it and twisting it a bit, pulling it out, and then I would go right back with the other one and slip it in, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so it's very, very efficient if you have that second set of hoops because then you're able to just really be able to maximize your time. In fact, I called it feeding my machine. So if my machine got hungry, that meant I was out of bobbin, right? And the machine will stop and give you that uh, notification too if you, if you run out of a bobbin thread. And then, so I would kind of know how long it would take for the, the machine to be done. And I could hear it from my family room because my sewing room was just off of that. And then I was able to be watching TV with the kids. I could hear when it was done. I would just put in, you know, pull the one hoop off, put the next one on, hit go, take the hoop off, hoop the next one and go back. And I'd be back watching TV before the commercial was over. So that's, that's pretty fun. Okay. All right. Let's talk about other, another fun thing that we can do with placement. And I'm going to move this hoop back, this arm back out a little bit because I'm going to use a, that four by four hoop again. All right. So getting things in the right spot is always a challenge. If you've been embroidering for a while, you know that that can really, really be a feat. So if you take a look at a shirt, whether you're doing an adult size shirt or a small size shirt, you want to find where you want the center of your design to be. Where's the vertical line and where's the horizontal center? And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this little guy here down pull back okay this little sticker here this is called a snowman sticker and you can see hopefully there's a vertical line going through him and a horizontal line and a little belly button the belly button's the center of the design so all I'm gonna do is place it on my design so it's lined up then you hoop makes it much easier to find out where you want the design to go before you actually start hooping because things like uh, button plackets and the size of the shirt, they're all going to dictate where you can get that hoop to go. Right? So, let me, grab, let me grab mine. So here's my little shirt that is hooped, and you'll notice I couldn't even hoop it this way because of the button placket, and it's definitely not straight. Right? So let's go ahead and put this on the machine, and I want to make sure that that fabric is out of the way. Let's be smart. Let's rotate it the other way so there's no fabric to go there. <laughs> All right. So in it goes. And now I'm going to go back to our main screen. I'm just going to go in. There's a bunch of different designs in here. I'm going to grab this cute little construction set and I'm going to say end edit. Now there's a little icon that matches that snowman sticker. So I'm just going to touch that, say okay. Now it's using the camera to locate the snowman sticker that's on the shirt itself. And then what it's going to do is move and rotate the, um, the design right in place. Okay. And then when this is Oh, my lighting is weird. It's not even, it's not, it hasn't even found it yet. It's thinking. Well, don't you love it? Okay. So I am, I can't even go back. I was going to see, it shouldn't take this long. So I don't know if I moved it and it's in a, in a weird spot or not. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I'm going to go back. I had turned the light down because we are... Uh, using the camera and sometimes the brightness of the the lighting there is it's kind of light it's kind of bright for it so we're going to try it again I brightened up the light on there and so let's see if now it will be 
if it will find it now. I think that was just a little bit the wrong, the wrong brightness. Oh, now it's found it. It couldn't see it before. It was too shadowy. Sorry about that. I didn't think that it would do that. Um, okay, so now it's found it. It's recognizing, and what it's going to do is take the design, rotate it, and move it over into the proper place. Okay, then, now it says to take the sticker off because you don't want to stitch through it, but notice how it's rotated that design and it's moved it so it's not exactly, exactly right in the center anymore. So that's pretty cool. So now let's get, we're gonna go back to edit and I'm going to um, undo, get it back to normal. Let's look at some other things that you might want to do with your machine. So now on most machines, you can re rescale a design, which means makes it a little bit bigger, 20% bigger, 20% smaller. Now, if you're not acquainted with why you can only do 20% larger, 20% smaller, it's because if you go bigger than that, it's gonna have gaps between the threads. If you go smaller than that, they're going to be so jumbled on top of each other that they're going to make a big knot. Okay, so that's why your machine has limits. All right, so if we're going to go in here and resize, the same limits will apply here. Here's my 20% smaller, there's my 20% larger. But if your machine has an icon like this, so if you have a brother or baby lock machine, um, and, uh, and obviously the multi-needle here, if I touch that, what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to resize the design up to 200% larger or down to 60% of the original size and it will take out stitches or add them in so it will stitch out properly. So just bear that in mind when you're doing embroidery, if you're making a design too big or too small, um, the quality of your stitch out is going to be dictated by that. So if you have a resize function, on your machine that's awesome then you don't have to take it into software to do that okay um, all right so now let's go and add some lettering so if you have a machine that has lettering this is a fun thing to do so I'm going to go in and let's do a W and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller make medium size and then I want to grab lowercase and I'm gonna do Williams I am S, I, oh, and I, I forgot to aid it. Oops. A, M, and the, let's get an apostrophe. And I'm going to array that because I want it to arc over the top. So I'm going to set that, and then we can move that up. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's arced over the top. I don't think it looks balanced there. I'm gonna move it a little bit to the right. And then I'm gonna go back to my text because I wanna see what it would look like if I arc it more. Oh, I don't like that. Let's try flattening it out a little bit. Yep, I think, oh, here's, here's my flatten out. I wasn't looking. So you can see how you can change that. You can make it flatter. You can make it more curved. So that's a, really, that's a really nice tool to have. And then we can also do spacing. So here it looks like that's a little bit tight, so you can come in here and space it out a little bit. Okay, then I wanna come in, say set, and I'm gonna add another one. And come in here and get C. And put in construction. Okay, all right, so there's my next one. I want that guy. Okay, fine, I'll use the arrows. Put that guy back in the middle, and then we'll go to there and move that down. Okay, I like that, but I think construction's too small, so I'm going to go to my sizing, and I'm going to just make that bigger. Okay, so then that's balanced. So you can do a lot of things right on the machine. So even if you are using a, a design that you have created or you have uh, made, it's very, very easy for you to come in and bring it in. 
because I showed you all the different categories of the embroidery designs that come in, but this machine has two USB ports so you can bring in your own designs. And then right on the screen, you can add your own lettering. You can add, uh, combine a couple of different designs together. You could do tons of different things. And then you also have the ability to take a design that you've created in software that you've purchased and you can resize that too and use and add lettering to it. So that's really pretty cool. All right. Oh, I didn't tell you this either. If you're using the PE Design 11 software, you can actually send designs to your machine wirelessly. And there's an app that will tell you if the thread breaks or whatever. So 10 years ago with my very first multi-needle, which was just a six needle, and it had a floppy disk and it's still running today. I'm telling you, they're very dependable. But I could have been watching TV with the kids and I would have seen that the bobbin had run out or there was a thread break. So I had to listen for it, but now you have an app that's free that comes, uh, that you can just download and put on your machine and it will tell you what the machine is doing. So that's really pretty cool. Okay, um, remember if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and um, then we'll keep, we'll keep going, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go say okay here and I'm gonna get right back to the clean screen here and I want to show you some other really fun things. So I'm going to take this off. Excuse me, I'm going to walk across you here. And I'm going to bring in this lovely quilt top, okay? Now, I am not really great with free motion quilting. It's not my forte. Uh, rulers are great. Um, embroidery to me is even better and a quilt frame is awesome because well, a quilt frame with robotics is simply an embroidery machine that's just bigger. Okay, um, so, but if you use your embroider machine to do your quilting, you might not have space for a long arm. That's okay, you can do it on your machine, your tabletop or your multi-needle. So let's uh, look at, you know, putting some quilting in here. So if I was going to be really quilting this, I would have my batting and my backing on here as well. So let's slip this on. It's a little bit bigger hoop. This is a five by seven hoop. So I'm gonna move the hoop over and there are little um, notches. So when you get to the next uh, size, you can feel it. So you don't even have to look. All right, so let's pop this guy in here. Make sure nothing's under the needle. Okay, so I wanna put a, a little border quilting right in that stripe there. So let's go ahead and let's find one. So I'm going to go into my designs and I'm going to go into the quilting section and I'm going to come down here and there's this cute little border right there and I'm going to say set. Now, is it going to sew out in the right spot? Did you get your ruler out? Good thing is you don't have to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to touch this little button right here that has a camera and a little piece of paper or it's a piece of fabric. So when we touch this button right here, what it's going to do is take the built-in camera and scan the hoop area. And it will display what's in the hoop right here on the screen. Can you see that pretty good? So now you can take a look here and say, you know what, that's pretty good, but I think it actually needs to come down a little bit, right? So then you can get it right where you want it to go. And when you're working with the whole long border, it's pretty easy to see where you stitched before so you can line up your next piece pretty easily. Okay, so that makes life really easy. Other editing tools that you have on here, you do have a flip over, which on this particular design doesn't change too much because it's fairly symmetrical, but you can rotate, you can size, you can flip over. Some designs you're going to be able to change your density. You also have something. Let's go in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my background because, you know, we don't want to see that all the time, right? I'm going to, one more, delete my background. So I want to come in and show you something really cool. Let's just grab another little one. We'll just take this, uh, this, our construction hat again. So in here, you have fun things like this icon right here is your patch icon. So what this will do is it's going to turn this into kind of a patch. The first item is the shape of whatever you have, or if you want to make a circle around it, you can create 
an applique patch all around the outside. So maybe I want that a little bit tighter. Then I can say set and now it's turned it into an applique so you can make a patch. So that's great. I'm happy with that. But you know what? I want to put more than one patch in my hoop. Let's go here. And I want to add more across. So I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add one that way. And I think I want to spread them apart a little bit so I can more easily trim around them. Now, I think I would like to add more going down. Oops, doesn't want to, so let's take that all up to the top. It won't let you put more than you can put in the hoop. So now it's made it so I can put the all those patches right in there and in one hooping I can get a bunch done. Now if I was using the bigger hoop, I could put even more on, but I have a smaller hoop on. Okay, so isn't that cool? Now let's go and I'm going to grab that same design again because I want to show you something else that you can do in here. So we have the ability to create stippling. So if you want to do a quilt and you want to stipple around your item, you can, with a touch of a button, create all that stippling just absolutely perfect without having to free motion it. You can also do echo quilting and you can change the spacing. You can change the stitch length whatever you want to do, and then you will have your custom quilted piece. So here's my, um, with more spacing, you can even change your hoop size. All right, so there is my, with more spacing, I can go back to stippling if I want to, and those settings will apply. All right, now, I'm gonna cancel that, because the other thing that we can do is take this design and make a uh, kind of a, uh, trace the outline of it and I'm gonna actually I want to have a little bit of space around it okay that looks good and this is gonna come in play in a second so I'm gonna put that into memory and it tells me where it's gonna go and I'm gonna say okay all right so this is the flower all right so let's say I've done my quilt and it's filled with I've got each block has this cute little design in it, but now I have my bat, my top, my batting and my backing all together and I want to quilt around the embroidery design, but I don't want to sew the embroidery design, right? Because you've already stitched it on the first fabric. You don't want to stitch the embroidery design through all the layers. So what I'm going to do now is go into my design center. Design center is an area where you can create your own embroidery designs, or in this case, we're going to quilt. So I'm going to go and take, touch that shape. Let me go back because I didn't explain that very well. This is where the machine had told me it was going to put the little outline of the construction hat. And it's up in the flower. There's that same flower we had a minute ago. And there's my hat. So if I touch that and say, okay, it brings the shape onto the screen. Now we can go and choose a stipple or maybe a pattern stipple. Oh, I want to do the bricks. Aren't the bricks just absolutely perfect for a construction hat? So I'm going to say, okay, and okay. Now I can use my paint bucket to pour that into the outside of the hoop. So now... When I touch next, it's going to turn it into an embroidery design. And so then I can just uh, go and stitch it out and it's absolutely going to be perfect, which is really pretty cool. All right. All right. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. And I'm going to bring something else out. All right. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about design center and quilting. So I'm going to move this over one more time. This is the biggest hoop. It is eight by 14. Ooh, that's a long way. My arm doesn't go through there that very well. All right. So whether you like to do, uh, you want to do team gear, you want to do home deck, or maybe you want to do custom quilt labels, whatever you may want to do there, you can definitely suit an embroidery business to exactly your liking. In fact, if you come into one of our stores, we can give you one of these booklets that will go through different things on having a successful embroidery business. 
So um, you're gonna find thing, even information in here on pricing and everything. So this is a good resource to, to get a hold of. So how to start a home-based embroidery business. Okay, so I've got my quilt here. This is one of those, oh, did you hear the click? Good thing it clicked before I started to sew, right? So this is one of those dream big panels and it has these beautiful petals on it, but you can custom quilt it very easily. So let me show you that. And actually I wanna do one more thing before we get going. This machine has a table that comes with it, a flat table. And I was noted, I'm noticing that the, um, the weight of that quilt looks like it's pulling on the arms a little bit. So I'm gonna put this table on and it just slides back underneath and that's gonna support the weight of a blanket or a quilt or maybe a big jacket back like a Carhartt, that sort of thing. So now I can slide this on and it will be much, much more supported. Okay, so on it goes. Okay, so now let's go into the design center and I want to fill one of these petals with quilting. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan the background of the hoop so I can do that. Now this is a bigger hoop, so it will take longer for it to scan. But the neat thing about the scanner in Design Center is that you can take artwork and you can have it scan the artwork and then you can turn that into an embroidery design, which is really fun. All right, I think it has one more pass. So as you can see on here, hopefully you can see because of the angle that we've added quilting into the different petals. So as we continue out, we're gonna have just some really really lovely things. Okay, I'm going to brighten up the image a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So here's the petal that I want to uh, to quilt into. So to do that, I want to use my pencil, and I'm left-handed, so bear with me. I'm going to draw around the petal, and I want to make sure I cross the line. So I'm going to turn down the image a little bit. Can you see how I crisscross? Let me bring zoom that up. See how I crisscross that line right here? If you have a hole, then you can't fill the area because it will leak out. So you want to make sure that you cross your area. So let's zoom back out. Now, this is going to make a satin stitch, and I don't want that to sew a satin stitch. So I actually don't want a line there at all. And then I'll use my paint bucket to change that into a no sew line. And now we can go get a beautiful pattern, whatever we may want to put in. Let's see, I think I wanna do the, the uh, hexagons there and say, okay. And then I'm gonna use my paint bucket and fill in that area. How cool is that? Now, if you want them to be smaller, you can come in here and we can make them smaller you can make them bigger, whatever you may want to do. And this is giving you a real life view of what that will look like. You can also make it sew out bold or sew out light. So if you don't want the thread to show, you can have it be a little bit lighter. This one is one of my favorite. It's called random shift. And when we change that, I'm gonna say, okay, but you notice how we have that perfect little hexagons that fit together, now they become a little bit more abstract and a little bit more um, less than perfect, which is really fun. So if you use that with the circles, you're going to have pebbles. So that's really fun. And when we go to set, now it's going to border right in that petal. So then you know it's going to go exactly where you want it to go. So that's a real fun thing to do, custom quilting. All right, so no matter what you might want to do, whether it be custom quilting or maybe you want to do uh, shirts for teams, uh, you want to get in with the book club or the garden club, and you want to have a business, you don't have to do a big business. Um, you may just want a, a, a embroidery business that will simply pay for your sewing habit. What could be better? I know as I'm looking more toward the days when, when I won't have a full-time job anymore when I retire someday, this is a great thing to be able to do because then 
I can do it as little or as much as I want. So you could do the same thing and have it as big or as small as you want it to be. So uh, consider that and we're happy to answer any questions about that at our store or you can always send us a, a note and we'll get an answer back to you. Or if you have questions now, we'll be happy to answer those too. So whether you want to have more fun embroidering because you can it's like that that showtime reel you can set it and forget it you get your design in here you get the the uh, threads all where they need to go and you push the go button and i actually go to bed with my embroidery machine running so or all three of them running because you saw that if there's something wrong the machine stops in 15 seconds so that's okay um but just let it go and then i would actually get up in the morning i would switch out the uh, shirts or whatever i am working on then i push the go button go take a shower then i come down switch them out again and then i leave for work and they're running so when i get home in the space of the morning i've got six shirts done Right? And then I can come and get dinner ready and I can keep switching them out. So running a business doesn't have to run you. You do it on your time, however you want it to go. Or if you just love doing embroidery, but you love to sew, you don't need to babysit your machine. Let the machine change the threads for you and all that fun stuff. And you can go sew on your machine. Okay, Carrie, what question do we have there? Um, Carolyn would like to know if you can show a magnetic hoop on this machine. Let me check, Carolyn. Um, no, we don't have one. Apparently, I cannot at this moment in time. Um, oh, she's gonna, you know, there was one yesterday with the scissors on it. They're, they're hunting. So we'll find it, Carolyn, if we can. Okay, so I'll go ahead and un unhoop this. So that way, we can show you that. Because um, if if we're using the magnetic, now the magnetic hoop is really cool. Oh, I want to show you another thing. When you're unhooping your stuff, you don't need to loosen up the screws. No, no, don't do that. All you do is come to the back side, put your fingers on the outer hoop. This works on flatbed embroidery machines too. Put your fingers on the outer hoop and then put your thumbs on the inner hoop. Push with your thumbs, pull, pull with your fingers, and you've got your hoop off. And the nice thing then is that your hoop is already set for the thickness that you had already been using, so you don't have to reset it. So that works out really, really well. Okay, so now, as we're going through here, the, the magnetic hoop actually doesn't use these arms. So I'm going to take the arms off in hopes that we're going to get a magnetic hoop out here. So she went running, so I'm, I'm thinking that she'll find one somewhere. The magnetic hoops are really cool. I will say that. All right, now, oh. Lori says it's in the top drawer under the office window in the white drawers. I'll be right back. In the, in the office, Lori? Says it's in the top drawer under the office window in the white drawers. <laughs> So if you don't know, Lori works here and this is her project that she's working on. I'm not going to show you the project because that would be mean. So I'm going to cover it up. Okay, because I want to show you something else. But Lori, I want you to know that you made Ruth run. So I'm not sure what chore you're going to have to do tomorrow. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I did notice that the tool was down here though. Somewhere. Where was the tool, Lori? It's in the top drawer, isn't it? Okay. I, Ruth was taking the magnets off, but I said, wait, wait, I'm going to show them. So here's the magnets. And so this little tool just pops those off. Okay, because they're very strong magnets. So they um, are, uh, they're easier to get off with the tool. All right, and there's a, there's a needle. They, they attract everything. Okay, now I've got to go secret squirrel. Now you can't see what we're doing. The store's working on something to surprise you all for those of you who are local. Okay. Okay. There. This is a magnetic hoop. <laughs> all right. So let me put that down. Okay. And let me take, I'm going to take this off. I took those two screws out. 
So I'm going to just take that off. And hopefully you have a nice uh, cabinet or a stand for your machine so that way you can um, put that on. Okay, I'm going to show you this really quick because in about six minutes, Instagram's got to go bye-bye. So if you weren't with us a minute ago or when we started, Instagram only allows us an hour and we're getting really close to an hour. So um, we have five minutes left so Instagram will automatically shut off. So those of you on Instagram, if we don't get all the way through this, feel free to come over to our Facebook page at qualitysewing.com and see the rest. And again, we'll try to answer any questions you may have there too. Okay, so you can see I just started one side the other and then one side and the other. And it comes with the eight magnets. There's one more. There it is right there and so this makes it really really easy so you can place your uh, project in the hoop and this is a side that attaches so I wasn't very smart and I know Lori is at home laughing at me because I put it in backwards okay so I did it the hard way just put the hoop on first then put it in then put on the uh, your project, okay? So using the same screws we had before, and I'm probably gonna have to unhoop it because this is a lot of fabric to go over the back side. So uh, Reva, a question came in from John. How complicated is it to change the threads if you have more than 10 colors in your embroidery project? Oh, that's a great question, John. I will show you. I will show you, okay. Got to get that screw on there. Okay. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this to the back. Normally you'd want the bulk in front. Okay. So then we have this all set up and maybe I want to continuously uh, stitch. I want, I've done here and I want to move my quilt to that area. It's, you know, I want to do this section next. So I'm going to take off some of my magnets, not all of them. In fact, I'm gonna leave this way. I'm gonna take these off. You gotta think. And then I can just simply pull this down and then that will stay on the same plane because these magnets are holding it. So then you can go and just put your other magnets back on and then you can start sewing with the next section. Hey, does that make sense? So the magnetic frame is really awesome when you're doing quilting in the um, on your machine. And I call it push button quilting because I can just put the fabric in. I've got a perfect pattern right there and then off we go. Okay, so let's change that thread really quick. So if I, I'm going to come over here on the end, Carrie, so we can look right here at this purple one. Maybe that will be easier for you to see there. And I'm actually going to flip this under the needle so we have some white there okay so if i want to change a thread because the one thing is when you're doing a design that has more than 10 threads it's going to stop when it's done all the threads it can and it will tell you which thread which thread location needs to be replaced so the machine will walk you through that i'm just going to simply cut that off pop this on here the new color and you can use the mini kings or the big huge cones of thread whatever size you want i kind of like the mini kings because i get a lot more thread choices in a smaller amount of space and in fact one of these mini king cones holds 144,000 stitches okay so now i have that so i'm going to go to the purple thread here and just grab the thread and pull it until the thread color changes then all I need to do is reach over here and try to pretend like I know which space I'm hitting. I hit the wrong one. I've got to switch sides, sorry. Can't see that far. Okay, so let's go to the threads and, oh, I'll show you that too though. Go to thread number 10. I'm gonna push the threader button. There's a thread cutter right there, and then it's now threaded and ready to go. So really easy, but if you forget how to do that, that's okay, because there's this little button here with uh, movies, and I can go here to my operation guide, and let's go to basic operations, and maybe 
let's talk about threading. So here's all the instructions on how to do threading. Isn't that great? That's fabulous. But what's even better is if I go to, let's say, do, do, do. Okay. If I come back in here, you can go to your videos. They used to put them right, the videos in with the, the instruction guide. So just know that is different now. So if I want to do a video on threading, you just can go in here and you can watch a video. There's no audio to it, so you don't have to worry about understanding the person. So if you're, um, if you're bilingual and it's speaking a language you don't speak, it's okay. All right, but it's just all videos there. So then you can watch how to do everything. So even if you go on vacation, you can come back and watch videos on how to do just about everything you need to know. Okay, so John, I hope that answered your question and a little bit more. Um, are there any other questions right now? Okay, well, I think that's probably about what uh, we're gonna show you today, but please feel free to ask any questions you want. We'll check back. At, you know periodically and see if there's any questions there and I see Carrie reading do you recommend putting something on the long sides of your large hoop to help secure the fabric doesn't move are you talking the magnetic frame or are you talking the big frame and then we'll wait to see what Carolyn says you know what, Carolyn, we can actually, we can, when, if you type that back out to us, we can make sure that we can get you the information that you need. Um, regular frame. Okay. So I think what you're saying is how the long frame is there's a long expanse can be, um, kind of wobbly because it's long and it might not be quite as tight in here. So if you're finding that to be the case, um, RNK makes a hoop, a wrap. That is, um, it comes in green, white, blue, red, green, white. I think that's all the colors and purple if you want it. And you can put that around the outer hoop and then that will make it a little bit chubbier to hold a little bit tighter um, or maybe a piece of batting. Um, but I haven't found, you know what, in all the projects I've done over the years for my business, I haven't had to use that. Um, these hoops are really strong. I mean, they're, they're really, really pretty strong. So they're more resilient than you'll find on your tabletop machine. So you may find that you don't need to. If you're doing uh, just one layer of water soluble for a, like a freestanding lace project, you might put a couple of layers of water soluble in that, and that would make it tighter. Um, but that would be an instance where you might want to give it a little bit more padding on the sides. Okay, so I hope, Carolyn, that that helps. Okay, all right. So thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next week, next Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we'll have a whole new topic for you then. So we look forward to seeing you there. And thank you for joining us both on Facebook and Instagram. And we hope that you give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. So we will talk to you later. Have a great day.